Thank you, yeah. Chairman, and thank you to uh, all the witnesses for being here. This is going to be a lively discussion because we have dramatically differing views uh, on this committee as to what is actually going on here. I feel listening to much of what has been said, uh, like those um, advertisements that you sometimes see on TV where some old band is selling its CD of its greatest hits and all the old songs that you uh, are supposed to love, uh, they're selling you the CD package. And a lot of what we're hearing today sounds like the CD package of the oil and gas industry's greatest hits. Um, I think the fact of the matter is that sellers in a market economy, which is what we are, set price. And the price that the sellers have set is a very high price. Ordinarily, the market intervenes to put downward pressure on prices, but the market for oil and gas is peculiar because it is based on an international cartel that sets international prices and a bunch of international speculation, particularly driven by the conflict in Ukraine and the uncertainty in Russia. So there's an international price that is completely unhinged from cost. And we've all seen this slide that the president used that shows what has happened as the prices went up. Up went the prices at the pump. And then per barrel prices dropped dramatically, and yet the industry kept its prices up. So this whole red zone is basically excess profit that is not related to a market economy. It is taking advantage of excess prices from an international cartel. And we have another graphic here that shows the same thing. Domestic oil production and the price of gasoline, there just isn't much of a, let me bring it down a little bit so the camera can see it there. There just isn't great correlation between the two. It's not very dynamically connected. So we have these, uh, this kind of oil cartel and a very small group of very big oil companies that are setting prices and reaping unbelievable profits. And what are they doing with those unbelievable profits? They're not turning them back to people at the pump. In fact, here's Darren Woods, the president and CEO of ExxonMobil, which is the biggest of the lot. And he's saying exactly what he's going to do. He's going to pay back his lenders. He's going to raise the dividend to his shareholders. And he's going to buy back shares, which boost share price and coincidentally his comp compensation. So none of it is going back to consumers. They're not even mentioned in this statement. But the industry PR machine is out full blast trying to blame this on people who don't have the power to set price. And it's a little hard to um, accept that, which is why I've proposed that the companies at least split that excess profit with consumers and send that money back to consumers' pockets for them to spend, if they want to spend it on more gasoline, great. They'll have money in their pockets to do that. If they want to spend it on food or pharmaceuticals or rent or whatever they want to spend it on, but share the windfall profits. Claw back some of the excess profit that reflects the disconnect between actual domestic production cost and these international cartel-driven, speculator-driven markets that the companies are riding along to pocket tens of billions of dollars. According to Exxon, they're spending $10 billion just on the share buyback part of this bonanza. So there is definitely money there that could be used to reduce costs for consumers. Mm -hmm. And they're definitely not interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. And they're definitely not in a real market because they're dealing with this international cartel, surfing on the cost, on the price, that is set by an international cartel full of not very great people, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Russia, you know, Venezuela, really thrilled that that's the group that's setting domestic prices off of which our oil companies run. 
And then that our oil companies, when they have that opportunity, don't dial it back to help consumers. They just pocket it. Good for shareholders. Good for CEOs. Good for stock price. Not good for consumers. That's what we're dealing with. That's the short run problem. The long run problem is that here in Congress, we have been buffaloed by the oil and gas industry forever to create a completely unfair environment for renewable energy, so we remain hooked on oil and gas. If we had solved this problem a decade ago, we wouldn't have this vulnerability. If we'd solved it 20 years ago, we wouldn't have this vulnerability. If we had solved this 30 years ago, and Senator John Chafee of Rhode Island was holding hearings in this committee pointing out what was driving climate change and how difficult this was going to be, we wouldn't have this problem now. We are hostages to the oil and gas industry, which is now telling us that the solution for the hostages is to buy more oil and gas. What could be more expected? I yield back. Oh, I'm sorry. I went over. I yield nothing back. My apologies. <laughs> my apologies to my colleagues.